Richard, another piece of the hog update is TQ uh, Jackson was uh, his waiver was approved for SMU that he's immediately eligible. Just kind of what what can you tell us what happened with why he decided to transfer and then just I don't know if you know about uh, just the timeline of him getting immediately eligible. I, I you know that was, I think it was some people were in his head uh, about uh, playing time and uh, it. It was kind of a weird deal, you know, initially uh, uh, Arkansas was definitely fighting uh, to try to keep him, and then afterwards it just seemed like that uh, he was he was he was determined to to leave so uh you know that that's that's pretty much uh, what what i I gather in in a nutshell, but uh, as far as the waiver i I don't know much about it uh, I, it seems like just because of the covid situation it uh, seems like they're 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 approving uh, more waivers uh, to to keep from uh, you know having such a big roster for schools uh, the next year. I guess that that that's just something off the top of my head. And if you have a question for Richard at any point this morning on a recruiting Thursday, it's eight seven seven three seven seven six nine six three. Richard, why I bring him up first is because I wonder just from what you gathered from the different coaches on that staff, how much more time are they spending? legitimately recruiting their own kids who are already on campus to stay at the university compared to previous years of the past? You know, I don't think that they, they, they really have to do that. Uh, from what I understand and talking to, uh, you know, people, uh, the kids, you know, and, and, you know, obviously sometimes kids will say all the right things, but when, if you talk to the right people, you really kind of know what they think. And they love the staff. Uh, I don't know if you really have to do much recruiting to, to keep them on board because of uh, just some of the things that I've heard. I mean, I've heard awesome, the word awesome all the time. Uh, 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 one parent saying that uh, their kid can't, can't, talk, or can't stop talking about the staff. So they're, whatever they're doing, they're doing very well. And it just, I would assume it's just being genuine with them and, and letting them know that uh, you know that they're going to make them the best football player uh, they can, and, and uh, love them at the same time. That's 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 pretty much it, uh, from what I can gather. Week five of the high school football season scheduled for tomorrow night. Who has stood out to you so far? I know teams have been scrambling to find games, complete schedules. Last week had a rash of games canceled and moved. Uh, what what's your takeaways as we now kind of enter the halfway point of? Of high school football in this weird odd year, yeah, it is definitely weird because you, you don't know if uh, uh, teams are going to be playing from one w- week to the next because of what's one day to the next actually going yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, at w- one kid that's kind of came, uh, uh, you know, out of nowhere somewhat as uh, Frederick O'Donnell from North Little Rock. Mm-hmm. He, he's uh, in four games; he's gone over a hundred yards and. He finally got his first offer, uh, uh, I think, yesterday from UAPB. He's a, he's about six two, about two hundred ten pounds. Very physical running back that uh, I think is probably going to uh, can continue to add offers as uh, more film gets out on him. Uh, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen him play in person. I've seen video, but uh, one of the guys that, uh, for us that covered uh, one of their, their games said the guy's definitely D one. So. Uh, who knows what could happen with him? But I mean, he is extremely physical; just bounces off of mm-hmm. uh, def- uh, defenders. But uh, uh, man, I, you know, I, you know, I tweet out a lot of stats each week and trying to remember some of the uh, some of the guys that have kind of stood out. Cam Turner from uh, 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 Blyville uh, has really uh, been uh, putting uh, putting up some uh, good numbers. He's kind of a quarterback slash athlete that uh, I think uh, is getting some attention from schools, but uh, trying to think of some other guys, but uh, no one off the, uh, off the top of my head, just, uh, just, uh, just yet. You mentioned O'Donnell and, and North Little Rock. Uh, they've got a game later on in the year, a few weeks away with Brian. Are, are they the, I guess everyone would assume they're the biggest threat to ending Bryant's winning streak right now. That, I guess that'd be accurate. <laughs> You know, yeah, and I, I, I wouldn't dismiss Bentonville. Uh, well, that'd be in the Bentonville's playoffs, good. though. But uh, I mean, in the regular season, it'd have to. Oh, be, regular season, yeah. regular season. I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah those yeah, are the three teams so. everybody's looking at. The the three you just we've kind of mentioned here. 
So yeah, yeah, I, I, I tend to think we, you know, you, you got to, you got to keep, uh, you got to stay with Bryant just from the standpoint they've done it two consecutive years and and they're rolling right now. They beat, uh, you know, uh, Trinity Christian from uh, Dallas and uh, and from what I understand, it probably wouldn't have been close if it wasn't for turnovers. So uh, I, right now, I think uh, you have to, if you are placing bets, probably. Go with Bryant, but at the same time, though, uh, you can't obviously discount North Little Rock. You mentioned Bentonville real quick before uh, we move on to maybe some other stuff, but they've quietly kind of re-pieced together a schedule after losing some games early with some out-of-state teams and picking up another out-of-state team, and they've had some impressive wins through the non-conference portion as uh, we kind of settle into conference play here. Yeah, they beat, uh, what, the the defending uh, state champs uh, from Kansas, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that that was uh, that was a big uh, that was a big win, and they, they just they just been impressive uh, in, in all their victories, and, and they got a, 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 a sophomore running back Josh uh, Ficklin uh, that is uh, very impressive uh, uh, too. He's a he's a he's a kid to keep an eye on. About five ten, about one hundred uh, no one hundred ninety five to two hundred pounds, and uh, good burst, a good physical runner. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I wrote about him. I had my, some of the top uh, 23 uh, sophomore prospects in the in the state uh, in Tuesday's column, and, and I included him as a guy to keep an eye on as far as being a college prospect. Richard, when it comes to game week, and I know that coaches have so many things they have to focus on, whether it's the opponent, what their, what their unit is doing this week, how much time relative to game planning do these coaches spend recruiting during the week uh more probably than uh, any other staff uh you know definitely more the staff increased it uh increased the hours i i don't have an exact number of hours but i would imagine there's several hours each day that's devoted to recruiting uh i was uh, talking to uh to a, a, another power five coach uh, that's uh Per, you know that that is that one of the top tier uh, programs, and and he was saying how long, how much that they spent, uh, anywhere from uh, two to four hours a day, or something like that, uh, even during the season, uh, working on recruiting. And I think that's something that that obviously you got to do. Yeah, I mean, you not not only are you obviously focused on you know the seniors, but you you're all, also developing relationships with the. Uh, Juniors and, and sophomores and and freshmen, some freshmen uh, that, are, that are you know already identified as potential prospects, and obviously that makes it more complicated when you're re- reaching out to the so- uh, sophomores and freshmen because you have to get you know, work work uh, through uh, one of the coaches of that of that uh, staff of that high school staff to have that kid communicate with you through you know uh, through phone calls and calling uh, calling the coach, so uh, it. it it takes uh, takes a, a good bit of amount of time, and it has to because that's obviously the future of your program. What'd you think of Game One? Uh, we talk a lot of recruiting, but obviously you're watching the games. You have an opinion. What What did you think of the Arkansas Georgia game? You know, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, verbalize a, a score or you know post a score on any any board or anything like that. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking thirty four thirteen. So it's about what I expected, and, and I think we mentioned last week. It, it you you wanted them to to be competitive. They were competitive. They didn't get embarrassed. They would. I mean, like they they just didn't lay down and and uh, just totally dominated. Uh, obviously, uh, Georgia took over uh, late in the second half and kind of had had their way a little bit. But uh, you saw a team that fought, and you saw some hope. And uh, you just hope that uh, obviously that that's the best defense that they'll face because obviously that was a that was a top tier defense. And if Arkansas can score some points and get some uh, get some uh, uh, you know some time for the defense to sit on the bench and get some uh, get some rest, I think I think they can do some damage. I mean, obviously I don't think that they're going to have a great season or anything like that, but uh, I think they could uh, uh, you know show themselves well. What do you think happens this Saturday night? Yeah, you know, I, I know. Usually, you know, fans like to go off, you know, or a lot of people like to go off the 
the first uh, game or two and, and, and come to a conclusion on teams. I, I usually like to wait until about week three or four. Uh, we don't know how good these teams are. Obviously, LSU, uh, the last year was one of the best teams in NCAA history, in my, in my opinion. There was no way they were going to be as good as they were last year. We don't know how good or, uh, that, how good LSU is. We don't know how good Mississippi State is. But you will say that uh, obviously what uh, Mississippi State did on Saturday is uh, pretty much a Mike Leach coach team. They're going to throw the ball a ton and, and, and put up the, put up big numbers. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think obviously we'll, we'll still see this Saturday how good Arkansas is and how good Mississippi State is, uh, a little bit more. And, and then we'll be able to, to, to figure out, I think by week three or four, you know, where, where everybody stands. RD, before we let you go, do you want to toss out a prediction on the game Saturday night? You know, I, I, I I'll, I'll because it's uh, on the road. Uh, you know, I, even though it's a reduced crowd and everything, and the confidence level that I'm sure that uh, Mississippi State has right now, I think you got to go with them. Till Arkansas starts uh, winning a few games, uh, it's it's hard to pick them. But uh, I'd probably go uh, 35 to 27, okay. uh, Mississippi State. How about the second half? <laughs> this, 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 this better hope but that's uh that's uh after the after right. fourth quarter life's right. life's too short to bet the under richard <laughs> appreciate you always hopping on with this man all right guys take Thanks, care richard.